first thing I would mention is that we are meticulous about preventing infection. We do everything such as spacesuits, antibiotics, antibiotic irrigation, and even seal the skin with this plastic that we put on. Here we are making the incision. The patella is in the center of your screen now. As we make meticulous adjustments so that we can get exposure, now we're seeing the end of the femur. We take off the spurs on one side, and then of course once that's done, we want to take the spurs off on the other side as well. There are also some spurs on the underside of the kneecap, the patella, which we also remove. This allows us to more adequately and accurately size the different bones for the prosthetic implant. We make a hole, a tunnel in the center of the femur here, and then we slide a rod down the inside of the femur. Using this as a guide, this allows us to cut a specific angle relative to the femur, usually five or seven degrees, we can then cut very accurately 8 or 10 millimeters off the distal femur. We have a capture device here that makes it a slot that we slip our saw blade into to make our cuts extremely accurate. Here we are taking a thin cut off the end of the thigh bone, end of the femur. Now this is typical. Most people think we're taking huge cuts of bone. That's just not the case. As you see here, we're taking very small, thin cuts of bone, just enough to make the angles right and to make the prosthesis have enough room to fit with your knee aligned near perfectly. This is a jig that has four different slots and we cut in that jig once we set it up right. But here's an example of the posterior part of the femur. Look how much we're taking off. Not a whole lot just the right amount. This is another jig that for a certain type of prosthesis we take out the center of the femur here so that a slightly larger prosthetic implant on the femoral side can fit. You will notice a lot of squirting water. This is antibiotic saline that's pumped in in a pulsatile lavage system. This really squirts, keeps all the soft tissue, bony tissue nice, clean, moist, further decreasing the risk of infection. We're going to remove this bone now and then we'll focus on the tibia. Here we have the tibial guide lining up longitudinally from the front and the side with the shin bone, the tibia. This guide goes from front to back and we're very meticulous about how we orient this. This may be the most important cut of the entire operation. We also match the slope of the top of the shin, the top of the tibia. And here we are meticulously making sure everything's lined up nicely. At the top of this guide, we're going to insert a device that allows us to take approximately two millimeters below the lowest point on the tibia if it's not too deficient. Now once we adjust that down, notice we have a nice slot we're looking straight down. That's where the saw blade is going to go and take that cut right below the tip of that little guide. Looking straight down this slot, now the saw is coming in. What a great view showing you how we make this cut to take off just the right amount of tibia. Now as we pry this up, you'll note it's very thin. You can even see the light through the thinness of that bony cut. And as we remove this, you'll see we're really not removing a lot. Again, the myth of the huge bony cuts. We have a tibial trial that allows us to match the size of the tibia so that we know what size implant to use. On the femur, we have five cuts we've made, plus that central cut. Now, we fit this on the end of the femur, and we're going to try to make sure we're nice and balanced. It needs to be lined up perfectly. Once we do this, we take the plastic insert between the femur and the tibia and insert this. This allows us to check the balance of the ligaments. Here's the insert right here. As we insert this, we then aggressively check the knee, make sure it comes out straight without any difficulty, but not too loose. We bend and twist and torque your knee to make sure everything balances nicely. We then irrigate again, of course. This is something we do every three to five minutes throughout the case. Here is the patella. We, in this specific case, want to take about eight millimeters off of the bone. This is a device that allows us to be very accurate in doing so. We bring in our saw yet again, 
take off exactly 8 millimeters. Once this is done, as you will see, we've actually taken off a very thin piece of bone. We're again trying to take off what we are going to replace with prosthesis. Very thin cut. Once we have sized this and drilled the peg holes, we bring in the prosthesis, the trial prosthesis with the peg holes, and we make sure that it tracks normally. We sometimes have to adjust the ligaments that balance that. Again, irrigating copiously, keeping those soft tissues and bony tissues moist. Now we instrument for the bottom of the tibial prosthesis. This is a keel of sort that fits into the tibial bone that further stabilizes the tibial base plate. We pound that in, make sure it's just right. We size usually from a smaller size up to a larger size so we do not have a fracture. And once we've done that, this is what we've taken off on the left here on the femur. Small pieces of bone, very specific meticulous cuts. We look at the tibia. This is what we've taken off and this is what we're going to replace it with. And then finally, of course, the patella uh, is the small green button and we take a small piece there. Notice it's pretty identical. Well, that's what we're after. We want to match it. Here's another step we often take many times throughout the case, but certainly before we put the actual implants in, we change gloves. This is another step toward antisepsis, prevention of infection. Here are the actual prosthetic implants, the femur, the tibia, and then of course the base plate fits on top of the tibial prosthesis. And then of course we have the patella. Notice the little pegs on the bottom that fit into those holes we've already prepared in the patella. We mix the cement with tobermycin. It's an antibiotic that most surgeons use to decrease the risk of infection even more. This is mixed under vacuum to decrease the porosity. Notice how porous that bone is. We're going to squish the cement right in there and make it bond like crazy. In fact, it's very difficult once you've cemented this in to get it out. Here we are putting cement on the bottom of the tibial base plate and we will get that just in the right place and then we'll put some glue on top of the tibia itself. Sometimes we call it glue, sometimes we call it cement, same thing. We push this down into that spongy bone to give us a much better bond. Once we do this, we cement our tibial base plate in place Notice that we squish the glue out because we have more than enough. We want too much, not too little. And so once this squishes out, we get rid of the excess cement by just trimming it off right here. After doing this, uh, we want, of course, a line-to-line -line fit, and we've already made sure that's the case. We put cement on the back of the femur. Make sure it's in the right place, mold it just right. Then we put cement on the femur itself, push it in that spongy bone to make sure we get a great bond. And then we impact the femoral prosthesis in place, bonding it to the femoral bone, and notice the uh, cement squishing out again. We take the inserter off, remove excess cement at this point. After we remove the cement, of course we have to remove that central cement as well, we take the trial plastic between the femur and the tibia, insert that, and then straighten the knee. This makes sure we can maintain full extension or a fully straight knee. That's imperative. Have to have that. Finally, of course, we put cement into the bone on the patella, place the patellar prosthesis in place, those pegs fit those holes. We have a device to compress this and hold this while it hardens, made specifically for this purpose. We remove the extra cement and hold it till it's nice and hard. From the time we start mixing cement, that's about 15 minutes. This is the actual implant, the base plate poly. We tap it in place and it's firmly fitting. Then we aggressively check that knee, make sure it comes out straight, torque it, stress it, angular stress, rotational stresses. And once that's perfect, we know we can close. Here's the deep layer. We do the superficial layer. 
and then we go finally to the skin. Notice how those lines line up. This gives us a good guide to match skin to skin. That's how we put in the staples. Of course, they go all the way down. You'll note there's a little drain tube that does not allow blood to collect inside your knee.